the last two seasons have ended pretty darkly. Uh, was that your intention to torture your fans, <laughs> or or do you have a greater plan in mind? Would, how will you make it so that we at least have some light of hope? What if Bear were to appear in the premiere? Would that help at all? Would that salve some wounds? Bear always helps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he actually wasn't around at the end of the episodes. I, I realized right. in the last year, and you know, that, we were remiss. In the we're, we're talking about having a spinoff, a bear. <laughs> After you kill everyone else. There you go. Yeah, don't let if Denise's name is on the script. Someone's gonna die. Just know that. Uh, be, be fearful. I, I think you know this is a, definitely a season where you know. We've seen essentially Samaritan as well. It, it, the machine has been compressed, it's in briefcase. Now we're in a situation where Harold Finch confronted in the finale with the humanity of his own creation, realizing in that moment he was about to lose it, what that meant to him. And I, and I think that that's an important drive in terms of this, this season uh, and what Harold's going to do to try to reconstitute the machine, but also is it going to look any differently when it reemerges? Has it been damaged in it? If so, uh, the conversations that he's going to have with Root in that regard, who has always been an acolyte of the machine, um, are going to play a huge part in this. Are you talking about me yet? Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing he said. He's going to play a huge part in this. So, Detective Fusco will remain oblivious till the end of the time. That is a question. So, don't talk about the spinoff yet, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's it about? Go ahead. Um, we were talking earlier, there, um, the, one of the burning questions we had is there's those three servers of the four, you know, the seven for Samaritan, that were those programmers that we have never seen nor heard mentioned since, which seems very suspicious because usually you guys don't wait that long for something to come back around. Well, we, actually, one of them has come back. There was, a, there was an episode, was it the season three finale? <laughs> season four finale. No, season three. Season three finale, I think a couple of them came back around. I think Daiso. Is that what you're referring to? Well, but that was when the servers were put into Samaritan to protect them. But yes. then we never saw them at all this season. Oh, no, not, not this season. You know, I definitely think it's a possibility. Some of this is actor availability based. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I do think it's important, you know, that you imagine that there are other people perhaps in the world who we can use who are allies, and whether they're, they're remote or whether they're in the same city. And they may they may just come back again. Could I ask you about the, the difference between Samaritan and the Machine as we're going to see it in this season? Because one of the things that you guys have sort of highlighted before is that the Machine has ethics, or it seems to have some kind of ethics. So is Samaritan kind of without ethics, or is it is it kind of dark, like evil ethics? Or? Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> Evil ethics. Is that, is that the thing? <laughs> I mean, ethics that are, you know, based around, yeah, codability, yeah, like lawful evil, as we might say. Well, I, th I think Harold is, is taking care to always make sure that if there was a human involved in the execution of whatever the machine generated. Mm -hmm. um, Samaritan was created as an open system. Uh, the machine is not, it was never an open system. It only generated a number. There was mm -hmm. the, the relevant side that was given to the government, there was the irrelevance that we accessed through the back door. Uh, but I think what's really important to understand, and, and one of the fundamental debates going on right now with artificial intelligence, and when an artificial general intelligence emerges, how quickly will an artificial super intelligence mm -hmm. ensue? And when that happens, has anyone taken care to make sure that it's friendly to humans? Mm -hmm. uh, I think James Barat has an excellent book called Our Final Invention. Um, references Steve Omohandro a number of times. He was actually on one of the DVDs, I believe the season three DVDs, we interviewed him. And he, he puts this very succinctly, and he describes how it could go wrong. Um, if you build an, uh, an artificial intelligence, perhaps to be the best chess playing uh, player in the world, to beat, you know, Kasparov, to beat anybody, uh, and it, you know, it's like Watson. Only it realizes that its directive was to become the best chess player in the world, and it determines, well, I've already beat all the best chess players in the world. I need to get to another planet to find more chess players. Only human beings are kind of an obstacle to me getting to another planet because they're not the most efficient use of gases or nitrogen, or whatever I need to get to another planet. So it doesn't. It's not necessarily that that AI wants to kill you. It's that it doesn't necessarily care about you. Or does it not regard you as necessarily the most moral entity on the planet? And I think that's sort of how you should look at Samaritan. Samaritan is an entity that has certain directives. I'm going to stop recording this shit. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>
We've been talking a long time. Let's talk about Fusco. Let's talk about Fusco. Let's talk about Fusco. Let's talk about Fusco. It was way more interesting than Fusco. Fusco's a good detective. How come he hasn't figured out what's going on yet? Hmm. Well, it seemed like you were sort of beginning to figure some things out at the end yeah, of the season. season yeah. What if he's been playing yeah. possum all so this time? Maybe, maybe he's not as oblivious as you suggested. I'm really Elias. <laughs> well, well, what do you say? If, if this is the end, where do you want Fosco to end up at the end of this? Police commissioner of New York, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I think Fusco is going to really start asking some questions in season five, and I think he's going to start conducting some investigations of his own um, to really looking into exactly what the hell's going on. Uh, he knows something's up, but he's really not quite sure what it is. Um, if you recall, I believe it was uh, episode 21 when we were in the hospital room. Is it 20 or 21? I think it was 21. We were in the hospital room, and Root was interrogating the man behind the curtain, and Mr. Finch has a conversation about the machine, and Fusco's standing there, and he's kind of like with that kind of dumb look on his face, like, what the hell is he talking about, you know? And I think it's going to start going more into that direction. Yeah, I think it has to, because, uh, you know, where, where Chappie's character was in the finale, he's arresting officer, the two biggest criminal kingpins in the city, uh, transporting them, you know, into federal custody, and then the car gets T-boned, and somewhere out of nowhere, a sniper takes out Dominic and Elias. There's going to be some questions, and I, I think you're going to find Detective Fusco on the hot seat. And when that happens, he's going to start to use his own skills to answer what the hell is going on in this city. Yeah, yeah, cool. Exactly. Yeah. I like that Fusco has actually been more part of the team this yeah. last yeah. season. Like before, it was more they would call him when they needed a, just like a errand run. Right, right. Now it's kind of like you know what they're doing. Right. What do you need me to do? Let's go do this. And mm -hmm. I think that's been well. It's really kind of cool. unique because it, he is, but he, yet he isn't. You know, and 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 that's really the thing. It's you know he sometimes uh, will go, you know. To, with Mr. Reese to, to, you know, a specific location to do something, but he's really not quite sure why he's doing it, but he's just kind of like, okay, Reese needs me, so here I am, I'm doing it, you know? Is he on finished uh, payroll yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. That's like the, that, I watched the entire time. He just kicked like, down like, shit. Like, that's the biggest jerk move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got a kid. He's he's a a sand sand you too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Vince don't kick down nothing. <laughs> but I actually think that the, the real uh, affection people have for Fusco's character is, you know, we can disappear up our own navel all the time. We just, I just did it a little while ago, and, and we can do that with Harold and Root. And, and I think, in, a, in, a, in an odd way, people like that Fusco is so reliable and trustworthy. And, and you know, you say like, well, he's not, he's not questioning this. It's like, but we like him for that reason, because he's so reliable, he's such a good friend to our guys. You know? Well, he's the every man, and I think, and I think Oscar, what he does is he gives everything a, a sense of belief. You know, you have this billionaire, you're not really sure. How much money he has, or where he got it. And you have this, you know, uh, military trained individual. You're not really sure what type of military training he has, but you know he can kick the shit out of people. And you know what I mean. Then you look at Fusco, and you're kind of like, well, he looks like a New York cop, and he, you know, he kind of gives the rest of it. I think a, a sense of of, of um, belief, where you know, which just kind of grounds the grounds the story, I think. But also, like, the show throughout the whole series, like, it's always focused on these really high-level things, like, right. you know, the, the intelligence community, but then also the cops, like, mm -hmm. the police are super important to it, right. and, and that's where your character comes in, and I wonder, what are we going to see in the next season? Are we going to still see that, you know, focusing on just the cops and, like, regular people, or is it all, are we mostly focused up here on, like, the <laughs> Well, look, I mean, with a bit of a compressed schedule, uh, yeah. we have a lot of story we want to tell. Yeah. And there's not going to be a lot of filler this year. It's it's, it's pretty much going to be a straight shot through. Um, there's some things we wanted to tell a little bit later on, perhaps, that we're going we're gonna to have to pull up. Um, but I think it's going to be all for the better. We're going to tell a really, uh, a really heightened exciting narrative this season. So you've got enough runway, you think, to, to bring it around if that's what ends up happening? I think we do. And, and you know, look, we write every se every season finale as if it could be a series finale. 
but I think the concept of the show is so strong. Never say never. The show could go on beyond this. Uh, I don't know. That's up to the network. That's up to other uh, distribution outlets, perhaps. Uh, but we have to narratively tell that story now. So that's, that's what we're up to. And, uh, the one thing I also want to say about Fusco that I think is really important is, as a homicide detective, you see a lot of death. And right. I think he's had a long career of that. And all of a sudden you meet these guys that are telling you, hey, someone's about to be involved in something, you have still the opportunity to step out in front of it. And I think there's an element of hope to that that warrants that friendship. So, so, so many, I'm, I'm just sort of surprised, I guess it's not a question, I'm just surprised that they're saying they're shortening the season when you, you've had so many other TV shows basically try to copy person of interest. <laughs> <laughs> We, we laugh about that all the time around the water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and they haven't made it, and you yeah. know. It's all POI light. Yeah, yeah. no, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. So you just, mentioned other distribution outlets, perhaps? What is? There? Well, you know, I mean, I'm just want you know, CBS obviously is, is our home. Uh, we're grateful for the pickup, and you know, I believe they'll always control the option on the show. It's it's up to them whether they, they want to continue the show with CBS. So we, we, we'd love to. Obviously, it's a, a vast distribution network. Um, but you know, this fall we're also appear, appearing in syndication on WGN, and then we have a streaming option with Netflix as well. I'm actually kind of looking forward to a lot of people who might have missed our show the first time around watching it, who knows, I'd prefer they even push our premiere date. Push it to a point where we can air them all at once. Right. No interruption. Straight through. Straight through. Right. I would, that would be board. wonderful. Yeah. If they want to do it in January, that'd be just fine with me. You know? I, mean, I think we're going to pick up a whole different audience when you know, a lot of people nowadays don't have television. They watch everything on their laptop. So I think, you know, there's a certain stigma that I think is placed on TV shows that are on network, mm -hmm. you know? And, and and I can say this as, as as an actor. It's been such a great joy to be a part of the show because it's it's the, the writing staff does a remarkable job with just constantly investigating and turning. I mean, you know, we talked about the, you know the, end of the <laughs> it's, it's forty this year, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, we talked about the Snowden thing in season two, and look what happened. We talked about the crashing of Wall Street, and what happened last week. I mean, it's like, it's kind of scary, you know? Um, and so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be a part of something like that.